Hey everybody, my name is Rachel and I'm here to give you a quick and kind of dirty introduction to sentiment analysis. So I'm going to start off with the definition of sentiment analysis because people love definitions. Um, and I'm going to show you basically the simplest possible implementation of this method with Node.js. Um, and once we're familiar with the bare bones of sentiment analysis, I'll show you some real world applications and reveal the biggest challenge in sentiment analysis. And I'll show you one of the most sophisticated methods that we currently have to ameliorate that challenge. In theory, sentiment analysis is a pretty simple concept. In fact, you probably do it many, many times every day uh, with varying levels of difficulty. Sentiment analysis is just inferring the attitude of a speaker or writer towards a specific topic. In, in a computer science context, sentiment analysis is just getting computers to do that work for you. So essay's core task is to determine what we call the polarity of a text or a subset of a text. And that is whether it's positive, negative, or neutral. Um, it has in its various methods been applied to all sorts of media. Um, and interestingly, the high watermark for success for an essay method is about 80%. We'll never reach 100% here because given a random piece of text, test groups act of actual live humans only agree on the sentiment about 80% of the time. So curiously, this means that computers are in some cases better and more consistent at essay than people are because people are terrible. <laughs> But uh, we were not always so lucky with our sentiment analysis being amazing. Uh, computer scientists, statisticians, and linguists have been working on it since the 1950s. Um, one of the first attempts at sentiment analysis surfaced in a 1954 paper by linguist and statistician Zelig Harris, mostly calling him out because I like his name. Um, the method he put forward is now known as the bag of words model. Uh, and it's still used surprisingly often for less complex tasks. So take the sentence, wow, I could really use a bagel right now, for instance. That's Zelig. Um, <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> the idea is pretty simple. Um, you take a block of text uh, and you tokenize it, or you split it into component parts. So here are your component parts tokenized. Uh, for bag of words, it's usually just individual words. Then we'll analyze each token individually for polarity called bag of words because you basically just take all the words regardless of their order, throw them around, and see what happens. Pretty simple. Uh, in fact, it's even simpler than it looks because there are several NPM modules that do it for you. The most popular one is called sentiment, just the word sentiment. Um, this is an excerpt from its source code. If you take a gander, you'll notice that it is pretty much exactly what bag of words describes. It tokenizes a phrase into words with the tokenize function, which is not on this page. Um, it performs a simple negation operation, which switches the polarity of any word preceded by a negator, like not or can't. And it puts negative and positive words in their own arrays and then adds all the word values into a single score value. What is the one big missing piece for those of you paying attention? I'll tell you. <laughs> um, it is source materials. We don't actually know what the scores of individual words are without a library. Um, sentiment uses a popular sentiment library called AFIN, which you'll see here on the left. It's a list of 2,477 English words and phrases and a numerical sentiment ranking that they've been manually assigned by one dude who has spent a ton of time doing this. His name is Finn Nielsen, so if you run into him, congratulate him. Um, <laughs> sentiment uses a similar library for emoji sentiment, um, which can be super important when analyzing data from social media and increasingly data from everywhere. Both of these are open source and eminently Googleable, so if you're trying to get a list of words in your life, now you know. Implementation with NPM sentiment is remarkably easy. Uh, it gives you um, a sentiment method which takes a block of text and it turns out an object like the one we saw on slide five. I'll show you that again, so don't stress if you've forgotten about that beautiful object. Um, I just uh, ran sentiment on a few of Canada's emotional, most emotional boys songs. Um, he is very sad. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, why would we want to do this besides figuring out how sad Drake is, which we already know? Uh, what use could we possibly have for mining enormous sets of data for emotional polarity? Well, uh, what if we had, say, an infinitely large, ever-updating list of authentic opinions about every possible topic on Earth, and we could find out how people feel about those things? You guys at social media! 
Um, and if we find out how the entire population felt about a certain topic, we might even be able to make some pretty accurate predictions about certain events in the future. And this has been done over and over again with sentiment analysis on social media. There are a bunch of companies dedicated to deep using deep learning and sentiment analysis to do everything from predicting stock market outcomes, usually to uh, very um, financially uh, positive results, to helping companies find the right demographics to market their newest products. Anyway, enough big picture talk. Let's analyze some sentiment together. Uh, here you'll see three tweets about Nike Air Force Ones. If I asked you to rate the sentiment toward Nike Air Force Ones in each of these tweets with your brain, not with software, what would you give them? Give me a minute to think about it. Okay. All right. I'd probably say the first one is very positive. Uh, the second is also pretty positive. And the third is, you know, pretty negative. Um, so we just did a sentiment analysis. Let's see if the bag of words method care if MPM sentiment agrees with us. So that first one, which is very positive, gets a score of zero, and we recognize zero words with any polarity. Weird. Second one gets a score of two, which I think is pretty spot on, but we're really only looking at five of the words here. Actually, four. Uh, and finally, this one gets a score of negative one, which again is probably approximately right, but it's only looking at two of the words in the total tweet. So, there's an unbelievably large list of rules that we use to process natural language in our brains. And as language changes, those rules will change also. Um, you may have noticed in the last set of tweets, they used a lot of vernacular language that uh, our friend Finn is likely not going to have included in his library. Um, not only that, but words and phrases can have different meanings in different contexts. So if you are, uh, if you're looking at tweets about Nike Air Force Ones, dope means very different, means very different thing than it does if you're looking at, say, I don't know, the script of a movie from the 70s. <laughs> uh, all of this means that in order to accurately process language, a computer would need access to an incredibly long, constantly updating, context-dependent set of rules. So our biggest challenge here is really that meaning depends on context. That trumps all others. So how do we deal with that? In the last few minutes, I'm going to give you a quick overview of what I think is the coolest method currently available for sentiment analysis. It's called word to vec um, On this slide, you'll see a little preview of what it's capable of. Uh, given a certain corpus, which is just a term for a body of text, it can very accurately determine which words and phrases are associated with each other within that body of text. These associations are generated by the word to vec method with zero human guidance. So what you see here is just a large batch of tweets that were run through a word to vec engine. And um, the output is just kind of like asking, asking the library which are the most similar words to this word that we're putting in here. Um, and this happened all by itself. So we can see that good is related to good with a G-U-D. <laughs> Um, but really, this is very impressive for a computer to be able to, to do this on its own. Um, and I'm sure you're all wondering how it works. Uh, well, the short answer is this, a uh, ton of math. Um, slightly longer answer is that machine, the machine learning definition of a vector is a massive list of numbers, like the one on the screen here. In fact, this is cut off. There are 200 numbers in this list. Um, these numbers are referred to as dimensions. So what we're looking at here is a 200D vector. Um, each one of these dimensions represents a connection between this word and another word. So depending on how closely these words are all connected, we can draw a map that maps all the words to each other, which is why we looked at most similar in the previous slide. This is something that word to vec is really good at figuring out. And by figuring out words that are most similar to each other, we can figure out with more accuracy what people are actually saying. Um, a little bit more deep into what vectors are and how this works. Uh, word to vec is a neural network that Google trained on a huge data set of word vectors. And creating, it created word vectors that we can use in other ways. So when you run your own corpus through word to vec it will generate new vectors specific to your corpus. And these vectors are, again, immensely complex. We're looking at 200D here. Standard is actually 300D. Um, but what we want to do with these is create associations, which means flattening them into two dimensions and putting them on a graph. Uh, this is done through a very complex mathematical method for which there is a library in Python, so you never have to actually know how to do it yourself, um, which will give you just an X and a Y. 
And then we can show connections between concepts or words that are similar to each other. And again, this is all just standard word to vec uh, being run on words and making these connections by itself. So it can tell when two words are the same word in different tenses. It can tell when there is an analogous connection between two words, so man is to woman as king is to queen. Um, and it can tell how proper nouns relate to each other also. And you'll see that these are also in the, in the country capital model. There's also a cluster association between European countries that's separate from the rest of the countries. So that also is inferred. Um, so thanks for listening to me talk about sentiment analysis. Um, if you are curious about any of this, uh, I'd be happy to give you links to some YouTube videos. Um, and if you're not, uh, there's another talk coming up. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs>